So, it will be good morning, uh, welcome you to this session. Uh, we will discuss today the energy transfer <coughs> in fluid machines part 2 in continuation of our earlier discussion. <coughs> now, last in last discussion, we have recognized that the energy transferred to the rotor of the machine by the fluid in terms of the energy per unit weight, which is known as head, can be expressed as just let me write 1 by 2 g v 1 square minus v 2 square plus u 1 square minus u 2 square plus v r 2 square minus v r 1 square. So, in last, in last session, we have <coughs> recognized that the energy per unit weight that is the head transfer to the fluid rotor can be split up into three distinct components, where the nomenclatures are like this. We can have a recapitulation that where V 1, V 2, U 1, U 2, V R 2, V R 1 are like this, that V 1 and V 2 are the absolute velocities of the fluid at inlet and outlet of the rotor. U 1 and U 2 are the tangential velocities of the rotor at inlet and outlet. These are the rotor velocities, wheeling velocities of the rotor at inlet and outlet. And V R 1 and V R 2 are respectively the relative velocity of the fluid with respect to the rotor at inlet and outlet. So, if V 1, V 2, U 1, U 2, V R 2, V R 1 are defined like this, we can express the head that is transferred to the machine by the fluid as it flows through the rotor vanes can be written like this. Now, we see that these three terms have got their different physical implications. Now, let us see first <coughs> what is the term V 1 minus V 2 square. This implies a change in the velocity head of the fluid or a change in the kinetic head, kinetic energy per unit weight of the fluid or simply it can be told as dynamic head, dynamic head you can write a change in dynamic head, change in, change in dynamic head, this, this one, change in dynamic head. So, therefore, due to the change in the dynamic head of the fluid, that means due to the change in its absolute velocity as it flows past the veins, the work is being transferred or energy is being transferred to the machine. Similarly, this term represents a change in the head due to the change in its position, radial position with respect to the axis of rotation. When a fluid has got a rotational velocity and it changes its radial position with respect to the axis of rotation, there occurs a change in the head or energy in the fluid. Now, this term can be better understood if we see this one. Let us consider a container where the fluid is flowing in this direction and container is given an angular rotation omega like this. So, basic objective is to show that when a fluid element under a rotational velocity changes its position in radial coordinates with respect to the axis of rotation. Let this is the axis of rotation at this point perpendicular to this plane of the figure about which the container is rotating then we can show that the work is either being done on the fluid element or work is being extracted from the fluid element. How we can show? Now, let us consider a fluid element at a radius r of thickness <coughs> dr and area dA. Now, you know that whenever there is a rotational flow field, it induces a pressure gradient, a pressure variation in the flow in the direction of the flow exists for which the pressure in the positive direction, this direction of the r is higher than that at this upstream plane. 
So, therefore, if we take the force balance of the fluid element, we see the net force acting on the fluid element in the radially inward direction is can be written as P plus d P into d A, where d A is the cross sectional area of the fluid element minus P d A. Well, which can be written as d P d A. So, what is d P d A? Is the net force in the radial inward direction, let we denote it by F that is equal to d P into d A. Now, this radial inward force balances the centrifugal force due to the rotational motion of the fluid element. So, this radial inward force balances the centrifugal force of the fluid element under rotational velocity. So, what is the centrifugal force? What is the centrifugal force? Let F c for the fluid element, it is the elemental mass d m <coughs> times the linear velocity due to this rotation that is the tangential velocity v square by the radius or the radial location from the axis of rotation. This can be written in terms of the angular velocity as d m omega square r. This is the usual expression of the centrifugal force which is acted on this fluid element. Now, if we substitute the mass in terms of the area and the other geometrical dimension and the density of the fluid element, we can write it rho d a d r. So, rho d a d r is the mass of the fluid element. So, this is the angular velocity square into r. Now, at equilibrium, these two are equal. That means, the fluid motion is possible in this direction provided there is a balance between the centrifugal force and the <coughs> inward radial pressure force. So, if we write this, we get the expression d p into d a is equal to rho d a d r omega square into r. So, d a cancels out. Well, we can write then d p d r is equal to rho omega square r. This equation is a very well known equation in the fluid flow with rotational velocity and is known as radial equilibrium equation. This is known as radial equilibrium equation. I can write it that radial <coughs> radial equilibrium equation. This equation simply implies that when there is a rotational velocity in a flow field and fluid flows in the radial direction, then a inward radial pressure gradient is imposed on the flow field which provides the necessary pressure forces to be balanced with the centrifugal force. You know that in any rotational motion up in your solid body, there is there are two forces that are in balance with each other. One is the centrifugal force which tends to make it flying away from the path and another the centripetal force which is a force which makes it possible to have the rotational motion which is inward towards the center of rotation. So, this centripetal force is provided by the pressure gradient through this pressure force. This is the well known radial equilibrium equation. Now, if I write this in a little different form, the same equation can be written as d p by rho is equal to d p by rho is equal to omega square r d r. Now, if I integrate this equation d p by rho integrate this equation <coughs> omega square r d r between two points 1 and 2 between two points 1 and 2 which physically indicates the two points. Let one is at the inlet and two is at the outlet. It may be any two points in the flow field. One is an upstream point and two is a downstream point, which may be at the inlet and outlet in a flow passage. Okay? Well, then we can write this 1 by 2 d p by d rho is called to half omega square 
R 2 square minus omega square R 1 square, which is nothing but half the linear velocity or the tangential velocity due to the rotation at the point 2, the section 2 minus u 1 square. What is the meaning of this? Now, what is this d p by rho from 1 to 2 integral? This is the flow work, flow work. Now, I come to the concept of flow work now. If you recollect, thermodynamic general energy equation, you know what is flow work. Let us recapitulate a little bit of thermodynamic concept. You know when you have a closed system, when you have a closed system and it interacts with the surrounding in terms of work, either work is being developed by the system to the surrounding or is absorbed from the surrounding to the system mechanical work if you consider, the most usual form is by the displacement of the system boundary, by the displacement of the system boundary for a closed system, because the mass within the system is fixed and under reversible condition this work transfer is written as P d v, where d v is the p cut, d v is the change in the volume. So, the integral is made between the two state points 1 and 2. Well, but what happens when the system is a is an open system? That means in thermodynamics we know there are two types of system. One is the closed system where the mass is fixed with the same identity, that is known as control mass system. Usually we tell as system. Another system is there where the mass is not fixed with the identity. There is a continuous flow of mass in and flow of mass out, where the volume is controlled. Volume is fixed, known as control volume system, and usually we tell as open system or a control volume. So, in case of an open system or a control volume, that means an open system, open system or a control volume, there is a continuous influx of mass and energy, continuous mass coming and mass going out. Similarly, in this control volume, if it interacts with surrounding in the form of work, that means if it develops work or it absorbs work, which comes in our case of fluid machine. A fluid machine is an open system. Continuously, the fluid comes into the machine at one part and it goes out of the machine. By virtue of which, the machine develops work to the surrounding in the form of shaft work. In some machines, it is being developed to the surrounding. The shaft work is being obtained by us. and in some cases, the machine absorbs the work from the surrounding. That means, the work is being put to the shaft in the form of the shaft work. This is a case of compressors and pumps while the work is obtained in case of turbine. So, how to find out this work in this case? In these cases, we write the steady flow energy equation. This is a little recapitulation of your thermodynamic concept so that you can recognize or appreciate the term d p by d rho as the flow work. So, what is that? If we write the thermodynamic equation, general energy equation of thermodynamics at section 1 and 2, then we can write that the internal energy at 1 u 1 associated with the mass flux plus the pressure energy, which is written in thermodynamics in terms of the specific volume rather than the density, plus we write the kinetic energy V 1 square <coughs> by 2 per unit mass basis if we write. So, if we consider the potential energies at this and this sections are given like this, if we denote J 1 and J 2 are the elevations from reference datum. So, this quantity represents the amount of energy influx per unit mass with the mass flow coming into the control volume. Similarly, the amount of energy going out from the control volume associated with the mass flux out of the control volume per unit mass will be the same energy quantities with their values at the outlet section denoted by the suffix 2. I am sorry, per unit mass means this will be G z 1. So, this will be G z 2. 
And if we consider the work is out coming out of the open system or control volume plus the work done per unit mass, here W is the work done per unit mass. At the time being, we neglect the heat flow. If you consider the heat flow, you can take in this heat flow either on the right hand side or on the left hand side depending upon whether you consider the heat is coming into the system or going out of the system. Now, therefore, we see that if we replace this as the enthalpy, you know from the definition of enthalpy, it is the internal energy plus the product of pressure and specific volume. So, we can write H 1 plus V 1 square by 2 plus G Z 1 is equal to H 2 plus V 2 square by 2 plus G Z 2 plus W. Now, under all usual operating conditions of engineering systems, we have found that the change in kinetic energy and the potential energies are much smaller as, as compared to the changes in the enthalpy in such systems. So, therefore, we can neglect the changes in kinetic and potential energies as compared to the change in enthalpy and we can write under such condition W is simply equal to H 1 minus H 2. That means, the change in the enthalpy from the inlet to outlet is given as the work transfer provided the heat transfer between the open system and the surrounding is neglected. That means, the system is properly insulated so that the heat interactions with the surrounding is prevented. So, nowadays we know that for any open system it is the enthalpy difference which gives the work done. Now, therefore, the enthalpy difference we get as the work transfer. Now, if we consider the process to be reversible reversible means without friction and any other dissipative effect and no heat transfer is there, then we can write from thermodynamic equation. First of all, you know the general thermodynamic equation T d s is d h minus V d p, where this s is the specific entropy, h is the specific enthalpy and v is the specific volume. These are generalized thermodynamic relations. Under reversible adiabatic condition which is isentropic condition we can write d s 0. So, therefore, it is clear that d h is nothing but V d p or integral of d h is equal to integral of V d p for between any two sections 1 and 2 which can be written as h 2 minus h 1 is integral of V d p. So, therefore, we see this integral of V d p refers to this enthalpy differences which equals to the work transfer which equals to the work transfer as we have discussed in an open system. This V is the specific volume of the system. So, therefore, if we come to our earlier slides, then we see that this left hand side is d p by rho which is nothing but the flow work because 1 by rho is v. So, flow work means that is the work transfer between a open system here the turbo machines or the fluid machines with the surrounding and this flow work becomes equal to half u 2 square minus u 1 square. So, therefore, we see some work is being done on the fluid system. If it changes its radial location from 1 to 2, where at 2 the radial position or the value of the radial location is more than that at 1. That means, if it goes further from the center of rotation, then this is positive some work is being done on the fluid element and vice versa takes place that when the fluid changes its radial position in a way that it comes nearer to the axis of rotation, then this is negative then work is being released by the fluid. So, therefore, if we look to this diagram, well, then we can realize therefore, from this equation that whenever a fluid moves from this position to this position, that means from an upstream position to this downstream position away from the axis of rotation, work is being imparted on the fluid 
and this work is stored in the fluid as energy. And this energy is mainly in the form of pressure energy. Why? Because it is very simple because of this radial pressure gradient, the fluid when moves from this place to a place where at 2, where the radius from the axis of rotation is more, then the fluid attains a higher pressure. That means, fluid possesses a higher pressure and therefore, the work done on the fluid is stored in the fluid as pressure energy. So, this way we can tell that movement of a fluid element with a rotational motion from one radial location to other radial location physically implies that head is either given to the fluid and it stores it or head is being extracted from the fluid from its stored head. So, this is the physical implication of this term that in a fluid machine as the fluid flows in a rotational flow field from one radial location to other radial location. So, either the head is gained by the fluid or head is developed by the fluid. So, this is the contribution and that head gained or developed is in the form of the pressure head. So, that is why this gain in head or loss in head is known as static head. Here the way it is written this head is the head developed by the fluid. So, therefore, you see the positive value of it indicates that fluid comes from a higher radius to a lower radius from the center of rotation. So, u 1 is more than u t that means, it releases some of its static head or mainly the pressure head contributes this thing to the turbo machines to be developed. So, the contribution of the second term is like that. What is the contribution of the third term which is very important and also very interesting physical significance. Just it is obvious from mathematical expression it is the change of relative velocity and one interesting thing is that where everything is that the first one is the inlet and second one is the outlet here it is just the opposite that means it is the change of velocity head relative based on the relative velocity from the outlet to inlet what does it mean. Now what is the concept of relative velocity let us think in this fashion the relative velocity is the velocity with respect to the moving vein that means if the vein could have been fixed the inlet velocity could have been vr1 and outlet velocity could have been vr2. Now, you consider a fixed vein where the inlet velocity is vr1 and outlet velocity is vr2. Then what are the uh, what are the possibilities or under which there can be a change in the velocity? Number one is the friction on the vein that due to the friction on the vein, vein is at rest. So, the velocity may change where the outlet velocity will be lower than the inlet velocity will be reduced because of the friction. Another opportunity is there. What is that? If it is not a single vein open to atmosphere, if there are a number of vanes in a closed casing and if the flow takes place through the passage of two vanes gliding over one vein, then even if the vein is at rest, consider series of vanes at rest, then the whether the fluid velocity will change or not depend upon the flow cross sectional area. That means, you simply consider a, a flow through a fixed duct, simply flow through a fixed duct. When a flow takes place through a fixed duct, the flow velocity changes from upstream to downstream section under two conditions. One is the friction with the wall and another is that if the flow area changes where the pressure changes and velocity changes. This is the consequence of continuity and Bernoulli's theorem. They are Due to the change in the flow area, the velocity changes because of the continuity. For example, if the flow area is converging, the velocity increases. And due to this change in the momentum, there is a change in the pressure that is even for an ideal fluid according to Euler's equation or Bernoulli's equation. So, because of the change in velocity due to its flow through a varying area passage, even a static duct is there. Either it is formed by two vanes or it is formed or it is made by walls just like a duct. So, velocity of fluid can change. Here also now you see that relative velocity change can take place in the similar fashion. That means, if the area flow area between the veins changes, then there <coughs> can be a change in the relative velocity. Otherwise, the change in the relative velocity is not there. Only there will be a little change due to friction and if the vein surface is very smooth, this change due to friction is not much. Change due to friction always makes the outlet velocity slightly lower than the inlet velocity. But the relative magnitude of the outlet relative velocity with respect to the inlet relative velocity due to the change in the cross sectional area 
in the vein passage will depend upon the fact whether the area gradually decreases or converges in the direction of flow or diverges in the direction of flow. If we allow a converging area in the direction of flow, then V R 2 will be more than V R 1. You understand? So, in that case what will happen if V R 2 is more than V R 1? Consider a fixed vein, V R 2 is more than V R 1 means pressure will be less at outlet than the inlet. That means, fluid releases its pressure or con contributes or gives away its pressure energy. If the vein is at rest means what? Practically, we will have to give some support to keep him at rest. So, if it is if moves in developing work, the release in the pressure of the fluid gives some energy that is fluid releases the pressure energy. In the in opposite case, when we allow a diverging passage, then what happens? The V R 2 decreases or according to Bernoulli's theorem, pressure increases. That means, when V R 2 is less than V R 1 because of a diverging passage, then pressure is increased. That means, fluid gains the pressure energy. So, therefore, you see that the change in the relative velocity means either fluid gives <coughs> away pressure energy to the turbo machines, the rotor of the turbo machines or it gains pressure energy from the rotor of the turbo machine, which is manifested in terms of the increase or decrease in pressure. So, therefore, here you come in this expression V R 2 minus V R 1 square says that if V R 2 is more than V R 1, which is possible only if the flow through the vein passage, flow area of the vein passage is converging in the direction of flow, then V R 2 is more than V R 1, then this quantity implies a change in the pressure energy. Because if we write the Bernoulli's equation, then we will see that P 1 by rho plus V R 1 square by rho. That means, considering the vein to be in a static condition, then P 2 by rho plus V R 2 square by rho. So, therefore, you see that V R 2 square minus V R 1 square. Now, you see V R 2 square minus V R 1 square by 2 G is nothing but P 1 minus P 2 by rho G. So, this is simply the change in the pressure energy, which is equal to that due to the change in the dynamic head based on the relative velocity. Since this is manifested in terms of the pressure head, this we will not tell as the dynamic head transfer. Now, we can tell that both of these terms, two terms contribute in the energy transfer of the fluid machines in terms of the static head. That means, the pressure energy of the fluid. So, therefore, they are told or they are uh, they are called as change in static head, change in static head. So, therefore, today we conclude that the general expression for the head transferred to the turbo machines by the fluid is given by 1 by g v w 1 u 1 minus v w 2 u 2. This is known as Euler's equation, where v w 1 and v w 2 are the whirling or tangential component of velocities of the fluids at inlet and outlet and u 1 and u 2 are the tangential velocities of the rotor at inlet and outlet. And with the help of velocity triangles at inlet and outlet, we can express this into three components which are very interesting from their physical point of view, where we can get an idea that this total head which is being transmitted to the turbo machines by the fluid is contributed by the dynamic head of the fluid and static head of the fluid. So, this part is contributed by the dynamic head of the fluid, where the absolute velocity of the fluid is changed. If it is lowered, then it gives the head, otherwise it gains the head. Similarly, the change in the rotor velocity as the fluid passes from one radial location to other radial location and along with the change in the relative velocities of the fluid from its inlet to outlet provided a varying area passage is given for the flow of fluid contributes to the change in the static head of the fluid. That means, either the fluid loses its static head. What is the static head? That is the pressure head. Loses its pressure energy and it is given to the turbo machines or it extracts from the turbo machine the pressure energy or the static energy. In it. So, this is the three components for the head. So, today I will end here.
Thank you. The books are uh, well.